Good morning, everyone. Does this ever happen with you that whenever you sit to do something very important, you get reminded of 10,000 other things to do? Let me tell you, you're not the only one. This happens with me more or less often. Here's me going to share the experience with you. I'm going to share a real life example from my life where this happens all the time. Here's me sitting to draft this exact speech that I'm talking about. Uh, when I sit to draft this speech, I sit with a lot of enthusiasm and zeal. I set my table, I set my coffee, etc. And then I write in a big font the psychology of distraction and my name there. Now after this is when I start thinking. And I wonder, how do I make this start an amazing start? How do I make sure I get everybody's attention in the first few seconds of my speech? How do I make sure this is a success? Now, so many questions in my mind. Suddenly, I come to a standstill, because I don't have an answer immediately to these questions. And I have this really bad feeling, and I'm feeling really underconfident here. Now, in this moment, I'm like, OK, Vidya, let's look at the rough draft that you've created for this. So now I pick up my phone, and my phone's in my hand. Now all of you all will know what happens after this. Your fingers magically go to those notifications which are there on your phone, as soon as you unlock your phone. Uh, there's Instagram DMs, there's WhatsApp notifications. I go check my DM. I'm like, OK, great, reply to that. Automatically, you know, magical fingers go to the stories. I go check the stories. Then we go to the reels, and then on and on and on. Now, 40 minutes, I guess, has passed by. I don't even know. Suddenly, I'm like, my god, I haven't done what I was supposed to do. I tell myself, you know what? I should get a snack for myself. You know, that will put me in the mood to do this presentation, <laughs> right? So now I get up from the table, and I start walking towards the kitchen. And then I see a bag of laundry lying on the corner of the room. And I'm like, oh, damn, I'm supposed to do this. I pick up my laundry bag. I was like, might as well finish this as well. Go do my laundry. Now, done my laundry. A few minutes have passed, and it's almost lunchtime. And I'm like, you know, it's no point starting now. I might as well have lunch and, you know, watch an episode of GOT with it because I was spending. So it's like, OK, let's do that. Now, after a few hours, I've had my snack, I've done my laundry, I've done uh, watching an episode of GOT, I've responded to all my DMs, WhatsApps, etc. Except for that one thing that I was supposed to do, that is draft this exact speech, right? Why do we get distracted so easily? Now the commonest answer is lack of concentration, inability to focus, or you're just not interested in doing what you're supposed to be doing. What if I tell you that that's only a presentation of something deeper within? That there's a deeper cause to this? Yes, there's much more than what meets the eye. And that's what I'm here to talk about. Hi there, I'm Dr. Vidya Nair. I am a general physician and a psychologist. It is an odd combination for some, but I think it's a must combination. I practice holistically. Which means, uh, briefly to say, that I try to amalgamate the knowledge we have of us being humans from various aspects of us being hum humans. That is, emotional, social, physical, mental, spiritual aspects of us being humans in understanding us better in the end, right? So that is what I'm going to try to do in understanding distraction. Now let's start with how we define distraction. Distraction is defined as the process of interrupting attention, or a stimulus that draws your attention away from the primary task. In that moment, your mind is stopping what you're doing in the present moment and wandering away to somewhere else. So if you look at it, it's kind of trying to avoid the present moment. Now, if you want to understand better, distraction is actually a coping mechanism. It's an avoidant coping mechanism. 
Now you might be wondering, what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to try to help you understand that uh, with two, in two parts. One, that is, why do we get distracted so easily? And second, what is, that we re what is it that we're really trying to avoid in the present? To understand why do we get distracted so easily, we can only take the most commonest distraction that we all have is the phone and, of course, the social media. Now, what is really happening here? What is the reason our mind is constantly going to this? What is the reason that we are so addicted to it? What's happening here? What's happening is the brain is actually wired to seek reward in the present moment. Now, every time you engage on social media, you are being rewarded in the forms of likes, comments, or even completion of watching that video. The reward center in your brain is all happy. Now, what happens is there's also a release of dopamine, which is a reward hormone, which makes you physically also feel great. Now, this instant gratification, with the littlest of gesture, you know, this little action gives us so much. It, it gives us this feeling of accomplishment. This feeling of accomplishment actually tricks us to believe that we're actually doing something while we are scrolling through the phone. Because the reward system in our brain is being activated, making us believe that we are doing something. We are feeling a sense of accomplishment. It's quite similar to a slot machine, if you think about it. It's basically tricking you to think that you're winning at something, that you're actually doing something. Now, there's also an aspect of social inclusion, which also acts as a reward for us, that we feel included while we're on social media, which activates our reward system. Now, this has led to a dependence on this instant gratification at the slightest sight of distress or discomfort. Whenever we feel like we, you know, something unexpected happen or something we don't know how to deal with, we go take that phone and just distract ourselves, right? And that instant gratification makes us feel better for a moment. But what it's also doing is that we're losing autonomy over our life by not facing the present, the reality in the present moment with responsibility. Now, we can't blame social media for everything. We can't blame technology for everything, actually. So, you know, Nireal, the author of the How to Form Habit-Forming Products says that source of distraction is not technology, but the source is within us to escape an uncomfortable sensation within us. A Howard study by Killingsworth and Gilbert, Professor Killingsworth and Gilbert mentioned that, you know, distraction is more to do with unhappiness rather than the activities we engage in. Now, this is what I was talking about. You know, the deeper layers I was talking about, there's more than that meets the eye. This is what I was talking about. Now, distraction is a result of our mind coping with something by avoidance. Now, what is the mind trying to avoid, really? What are we really trying to avoid in these moments when we are doing something very important? Here's me again. <laughs> so, now, when I'm sitting to do, this, to do this presentation, I enter this thought cloud where I say, oh God, how do I start? You know, make sure it's great, it's important. And now I reach this place where I feel like, oh, I, that I don't know, you know, I, I feel like I'm stupid. You know, this whole thought spiral goes down to that. I'm feeling of, you know, feeling with this thought, which is not a great feeling. You know, I'm not feeling good about myself. Now, when this feeling comes up, our unconscious mind recollects all the past experiences where I've felt this feeling before. And also, the associated belief we learned with that experience. What I mean to say is that whenever I have felt I can't do this, I don't know, I'm stupid, what I've learned from my primary environment or the education system or society around me is that you're a failure or you're not enough. You know, this is what I've learned whenever there's been a moment of, I can't do this or I'm stupid. Now, when this happens, I am looking at myself in a particular way. My self-image gets altered. My self-worth is affected. My confidence is affected. Now, in this moment, it's a painful experience for the self. You know, me, the self within. 
I myself am judging myself. I myself am calling myself a failure. This is what the mind is trying to avoid. This is what the mind fears. The mind fears failure, not just because of failure, but because of the way we look at ourselves when we fail, because of the way we judge ourselves when we fail, more than anybody else, which only reinforces this belief, by the way, that every time we judge ourselves, we tell ourselves, I'm a failure. We're reinforcing that belief within us. Now, this is a learned pattern. It is part of our subconscious mind now. Just like this avoidant coping mechanism is a program which is automatic as a way of dealing with this. Now, how do you ask, right? All of this is happening behind the scenes backstage without us being aware of it. We are not aware that this is really happening because it happens so fast automatically. Well, that's how the mind works. Here's a presentation of how the mind works. This is the iceberg theory by Freud. Now, what do we know about ourselves is only the first, the upper half of the iceberg, the part we see, which is the conscious mind, which is responsible for willpower, short-term memory, logical thinking, critical thinking. That's the conscious mind. And it is only in control 10% of the times. Now, the big chunk that you see underwater, that is a subconscious mind, is in control 90% of the time which contains your beliefs, your emotions, your habits, values, protective mechanisms, imagination, long-term memory, and intuition. Now, you might be wondering, how is that possible? Well, think about this, you know, simple acts that we do daily, like walking, talking, etc. We're not conscious of it. See, now I'm just moving. I walk, my legs are just moving by itself. It's automatic. But it was learned at a point of time. When we were kids, we learned to walk. The subconscious mind is in control 90% of the times. It doesn't mean that we cannot change this programming. Yes? So now, how do we make sure that this automatic mechanism that we have is not hindering us in achieving our primary goals? We consciously change it. Yes? That's how we can go about it, is consciously change it. For consciously changing it, first we develop a new perspective. What the perspective I'm talking about is, firstly, we change the way we look at failure. You know, it's not necessary that every time, you know, you don't get to do something or something unexpected happens. That means that you are a failure. It doesn't mean that you're not enough. You can change this belief to, okay, I'm trying, I'm learning, I'm growing, maybe I need to do something different. Whatever you might choose as a belief, as a replacement for this older belief. Now, how do I apply this to our day-to-day -day life? Now, to apply this to our day-to-day -day life, first you need to be aware that which areas of your life has been affected by this avoidant mechanism. Most commonly, it's the areas of the life which have come to a standstill. You know, those areas of your life where you've always thought, oh, I want to do something about this, but we just keep talking about it. It's right there. It's like still in that to-do list or still in that bucket list, right? So these aspects are the parts of your life where actually you need to check in. See what's stopping you, what belief system, what behavioral pattern. And then think about an action, any action, even one small step to bring about change in that area of your life. Now, this is going to be explained at a thought level and behavioral level for application. Now, I've given you the knowledge, the perspective, the plan of action. Start with that first. Now we have to apply this. Without application, no results going to happen. We can keep telling ourselves, you're not a failure, you're not enough. We can keep saying that, or telling ourselves, this is the perspective I want to develop, this is what I want to do. But until you do it, no change is going to happen. Because what we are trying to do is reprogram ourselves. You know, these patterns that we have are actual neural pathways in our brain. They're like circuits. They're automatic. They're formed. There's a brain circuit which is responsible for it. We have to now rewire it. So that's only going to happen through action and experience because that's how the first one was built. So here's how we can start. We start at a thought level and then we go to action. So whenever a thought comes, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't do this, I failed, I'm feeling this. I'm not enough, I'm a failure. This is the old belief pattern. When I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this in my body too. 
I'm breathless, I'm feeling very restless, uncomfortable, very anxious. Most of us do feel this, which instantly lead us to the avoiding that uh, you know, job and making us feel better by <laughs> picking the phone. Instant gratification there. The moment is where you need to regulate yourself first. Just take a moment to ground yourself. What I mean by grounding is bringing your mind to the present. Because when it's gone back, gone back to the old belief, it's gone back to the past experiences unconsciously. Now, new belief. Breathe first, ground first, and tell yourself whatever you want to tell yourself. I will try to choose this. I like to choose this version of it. I'm trying. I'm learning. Let's try this. Now, this puts me in a more open space than in a space where I'm expected to do something very big, where there are more chances of failure because there's a lot of pressure. When I'm telling myself I'm learning, I'm trying, I've actually told myself I can do many things here. I'm not cornered, right? Because this point where I feel that I'm a failure is a point of insecurity. By telling myself that I'm trying, I'm learning, let's try this, I can do this, you've got this, I'm telling myself you're safe. Nothing's going to happen. You're learning, you're trying, you can do this. This is what we need to start at a thought level first. Once this is done, take action. Very, very important. Now, the moment I've done this, what's happening is I've created a new pattern. Because my old pattern was every time I came upon the point of insecurity where there was old belief, I would avoid it and not do that act. I learned that, no, no, this is the best way. And I told my mind learns this is the safest way to do this. Let's see, I've avoided this uncomfortable feeling. But that's what I've become dependent on now. By doing this, I'm developing a new pattern, which gives me a result that I did it, which challenges the old belief and the old thought that I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, I did it. I could do it. All the belief systems have become a part of you by repetition and practice. You need to be consciously aware of it, change it by reprogramming every single time. This is work, by the way. It's not easy. Yes, this is definite work. You can definitely do this. Now, at the end, I do want to tell you that distraction is nothing good or bad about it. It's actually a coping mechanism. It is needed. We all need it. Yes. But the point that you need to ask yourself here is, what you need to question yourself is that, is it affecting your life in which way that is not letting you lead the life that you want? Is it inhibiting you? Is it taking away your reality and your primary goals in your life? And that's time. Thank you so much. I hope this was good for you. <laughs> Have a good day. Rest of the week.